How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and start on the Provider Edge VRF configuration. And in order for us to be successful with doing this, we're gonna go ahead and do this on just, just the PE routers and just to allow the PE routers to exchange routing information initially. Because once we get done with this video um, and we get, uh, we get the VRFs configured, uh, it won't take us that terribly long. We'll also get BGP configured as well. So that's going to be, uh, well, no, I think I'll do BGP in a separate video just to keep it concise to whatever the config is so you're not waiting for something specifically. So we'll do, we'll do the BGP config in the next video. But we'll do the VRF config in this video, get it all squared away, the, both the CE and the PE routers all ready to go. And then once we have that done, then in the next video we'll do the BGP. Um, but we're going to do just a minimum configuration for the VRFs. So only the PE routers will be able to exchange routes with each other in the respective ASs. In other words, R19 will propagate a route to CSR1. CSR1 will propagate to, route, to route reflector 1. Route reflector 1 will send that to CSR2. And CSR2 will propagate that down to R22. But um, neither ASBR will receive any prefixes because there won't be a VRF configured because option A, when we get to that point, will be where that comes into play. So we'll have to take a look at those details as we're going along and take that into consideration. So let's go ahead and dive into the VRF config. So we are gonna be using both IPv4 and IPv6 con configuration here. So we're gonna go and specify the VRF definition is gonna be C1 for customer one. And the RD in this case is going to be one colon one, and the route target export will be um, one colon uh, one, and the route target import will be one colon two for CSR two, and then address family IPv4 unicast and IPv6 unicast. Do show run VRF, and just like I mentioned. In the intra AS layer 3 VPN section, when you specify the route target values outside of the address family, you're saying across the board for all the address families of what you want to import and export. So, right now, we're going to say we want to send routes from router one outbound and we also want to accept routes inbound. So, the first digit here on the left side of the colon, so this one right here, indicates the customer. This indicates the, the PE or ASPR number. So if we want to do import routes from XR11, we're going to do a 1 colon 11. If we want to do stuff from CSR5, it's going to be a 1 colon 5, etc. So we have that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to interface gig 3, do show IP interface brief. We're going to go to uh, IP address is going to be 101.1.19.1 slash 24. Actually, before I do that, the VRF forwarding is going to be C1, and IP address is going to be 101.1.19.1 slash 24. No shut it. And then IPv6 address is going to be 101 colon 1 colon 19 colon colon 1 slash 64. Just so we have V4 and V6 at the same time working. And then we're going to jump over to CSR or router 19. I'm going to go ahead and get him configured. So host name is going to be R19. We're going to IPv6 unicast routing. Interface gig 0 slash 0. IP address is going to be 101.1.19.19 slash 24. And then IPv6 address is going to be 101 colon 1 colon 19 colon colon 19 slash 64. And then I'm going to go create an interface loopback 0. Or I'll do... I'll do a loopback one, and then it'll be IP address is going to be uh, 10.1.19.19 slash 24. And you might say, okay, why are you using uh, loopback one and not loopback zero? Well, this is customer one, and I want to be able to define it as such. So loopback one is going to keep in my mind, this is customer one, and the IP addressing is going to line up with that. So customer one, 10.1. So if customer two would be loopback two, it would be 10.2 dot, say, 20.20 20 slash 24. So do show IP interface brief. And we're going to type in IPv6 address is going to be 10 colon 1 colon 
19 colon colon 19 slash 64. So we have all that squared away. Interface gig zero slash zero, no shut. And then we are gonna be set up for success with that. So now if I do ping 10.1.19.1, I should get a ping reply. Did I not bring up CSR one side? Do show IP interface brief. A 101, that's my fault. On uh, 19, uh, I'm at the ping 101. That should work now. There we go. And then do ping uh, 101 colon 1 colon 19 colon colon 1. That should also work. So I'm going to go ahead and save the config on that box. So we are squared away there. Now the next thing to do is go down to CSR2 and do the exact same thing. So now one might ask, well, couldn't you just redistribute connected on CSR1 and CSR2 and just validate the config that way and do a static route on the customer edge right side? I could. That is a viable solution. I'm just choosing not to do that because uh, now I have to go underneath BGP and do redistribute connected and redistribute static to get to the loopback address of the CE router. So I'd rather let dynamic routing do the job and not have to physically or statically assign anything. So on CSR2, we're going to do the same exact same thing. Uh, VRF definition is going to be C1. RD is going to be 1 colon, colon 1. Route target export is going to be 1 colon 2. Route target import will be 1 colon 1. Address family IPv4 and v6. Interface gig 3 will be VRF forwarding will be C1. IP address is going to be 101.2.22.2 slash 24. IPv6 address is going to be 101 colon 2 colon 22 colon colon 2 slash 64. No shut it. That's going to bring that guy online. Let's go over to router 22 and get him squared away. Host name is R22. Interface gig 0 slash or uh, IPv6 unicast routing interface gig 00, zero. IP address is going to be 101.2.22.22 slash 24 and then IPv6 address of 101 colon 2 colon colon 22 or sorry 22 colon colon 22 slash 64 no shut it interface loopback 0 or sorry loopback 1 IP address is going to be 10.1.22.22 slash 24. IPv6 address is going to be uh, 10 colon 1 colon 22 colon colon 22 slash 64. And do show IP interface brief. All that looks good. Do ping uh, 101.2.22.22 do and then we're just gonna colon 2 colon 22 colon colon 2 make sure I can ping there and we can so next last step for us to do is on CSR 8 get him squared away so global config BRF definition C1 uh, RD is 1 colon in this case here we're on a different autonomous system so we're going to use a different RD value and a different route target value so I'm going to do RD value is going to be 2 colon 1. So autonomous system is first, and then customer number is second. And then the route target export is going to be 2 colon 1. I'm sorry, 2 colon 8. And the import will be uh, 2 colon 16. And you might say, well, how come you're doing 2 colon? Well, Again, we're in the different autonomous system number. So on CSR1, if we were to do show run VRF, we're specifying in the route target export that this first portion of the route target is going to be the autonomous system number. Where on CSR8, we're in AS2. So we had to specify 2 colon 8 as our export, so away from 8, and then in from 16 with 2 colon 16. That's why we're doing that. Address paint. Address family IPv4 unicast. 
IPv6 unicast. And then interface gig three, IP address of, we go ahead and close that out. Actually, let me, let me scoot this down just a touch because of that issue. Bring that down just a little bit until I get to, unless because it's almost a guarantee that I'm going to get no, more notifications. So we're going to do 101.8.8.25.8 slash 24. And then IPv6 address of 101 colon 8 colon 25 colon colon 25 slash 64. No shut the interface. Then we're going to go over to 25, set him up, host name is going to be um, R25, IPv6 unicast routing, interface gig 0 slash 0, IP address of 101.8.25.25 slash 24. I didn't accidentally configure him with, I did. And we'll make sure that this is a 8 and not a 25. And then IPv6 address is going to be 101 colon 8 colon 25 colon colon 25 slash 64. And then no shut this port. Interface loop bag 1. There we go. And then we're going to type in IP address is going to be 10.1.25.25 slash 24. IPv6 address is going to be 10 colon 1 colon 25 colon colon 25 slash 64. Do show IP interface brief. Very good. And then do ping 101.8.25.8. Make sure I get ping. There we go. Do ping. 101 colon 8 colon 25 colon colon 8. There we go. That ping works. And then now we're going to go over to XR 16 and get him squared away. So let's jump onto 16. Rob and Cisco. Global config. BRF is going to be C1. And then we have the uh, address family IPv4 unicast. We have the route target, or I'm sorry, import route target is going to be, in this case here, is going to be 2 colon 8. The export route target will be 2 colon 16. And we're going to do a show config. Grab these two lines of config. And IPv6. There we go, exit out of all that. And then we're gonna go to uh, gig two. So interface gig 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0.0.2, BRF C1, IP address of 101.16.28.16 slash 24, IPv6 address of 101 colon 16 colon 28 colon colon 16. Uh, 16 slash 64. That should all line up, which it does. I'm going to go ahead and no shut the port and I'm going to commit the config. And that should be all she wrote. Do show IP interface brief. Beautiful. So now we get to go over to 28 now and get him configured. Host name is going to be R28. Uh, IPv6 unicast routing. Interface gig 0 slash 0. IP address of 101.16.28.16, or 28 in this case, slash 24. And then IPv6 address of 101 colon 16 colon 28 colon colon 28 slash 64. No shut the port. Bring that online. And then we're going to go to interface loopback 1, IP address of 10.1.28.28 slash 24 and then IPv6 address of 10 colon 1 colon 28 colon colon slash 20, 28 slash 64 do show IP interface brief do ping 
uh, 16.28.16. Beautiful. And we're just going to hit this up. Colon 16, colon 28, colon, colon 16. Make sure we can ping. That way we can. All right, so as it sits right now, we have all of the the, the VRFs are con configured. The I addresses are set up and IP addressing works and we can ping the attachment circuit or the first, uh, the, the last mile, the, the whatever you want to call it. The connection between the CE and the PE is good to go. The next step in the next video, we're going to go ahead and get the BGP pairings up and running. That shouldn't take us very long at all. We're going to use the same, we're going to use the same BGP autonomous system number on, no, we'll use a different one because obviously we'll take a look at that, but um, in the Intra AS section, I went through and I showed you what it would look like if you had the same autonomous system number and you'd have to do some sort of AS path relaxation, whether it's usually allow AS in or AS override or whatever the case might be. Here we're going to be able to take and use just different autonomous system numbers. So we'll use like, uh, I'm not really sure yet, 119, 122, something like that. We'll get, we'll get creative with it. But we'll make it obvious as to who it is and what it's doing. So one something, 10, 119, 122, 125, 128, something like that. So it'll be obvious to who the route's coming from. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. And we'll catch you guys in the next video.